Wagner chef and host Mitch, the recipe king. Today I have an amazing keto lasagna coming your way at just about 400 calories. So if you're crazy for keto, love lasagna, then this dish will treat you just like a star. It's loaded with fresh veggies and even your kids will love it. So let's get to cooking. When I was younger, my mom tried to teach me to cook, but being British, food was kind of bland and boring. So I started to learn to cook watching a, the, one of the first chefs on television, the Galloping Gourmet, Graham Kerr. And I used to run home from school every day just to watch him and write down recipes and I'd get my mom to take me to the store and we'd purchase the things needed for the menu and I would cook it. I started doing that when I was about 12 years old. So I think it's important that you get your kids and your family into the kitchen when you're cooking because it makes it so much better. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. There's a couple of processes when you're making lasagna. And in this case, we have two different steps. The first thing we're making is a chicken crust for the lasagna, and we're not using any noodles, and I'm gonna tell you how we're replacing those noodles in just a minute. So when you're cooking your chicken, I want you just to get a boiling pot of water, some carrots, some celery, some salt, some pepper, and about a pound and a half of chicken. Throw it in the pot, what you're going to end up with is not only some great tasting chicken, but you're also going to have some great stock for later on. And you can freeze that and use it for anything else that you want to use, like chicken soup, if you have a little bit of a cold. So once you've gotten your chicken and it's cooled down, you're going to shred it. So you're going to take your chicken when it's cool, and you're just going to break the chicken apart, and it's going to shred up really nicely. And you're going to end up with just some nice shredded chicken like this, all right? So once you've got about a pound and a half of chicken in your recipe, you're going to add two eggs to it. And you're gonna add about a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. So you're gonna mix that in with the chicken. And then you're gonna stir it all together. That's gonna to create the crust that we're making for our lasagna tonight. The egg helps bind it all together. The Parmesan cheese melts and into the chicken, and it creates this amazing crust. You're gonna turn your oven on to about 400 degrees and let it warm up before you start this. Line your pan, whatever you're gonna cook with, with parchment paper. It not only makes it easier to cook with, it also makes your cleanup a little bit easier. So I've taken this pan, we've lined it with parchment paper. We're gonna spray a little bit of olive oil in it. Now the olive oil is just gonna help brown the outside of that chicken. Pour the chicken into the pan. And you're just gonna push it off to the side. As it starts to push off, we're just pushing it down. It's gonna be about a quarter inch to a half inch thick. And you're gonna bring that all the way up to your sides. All the way, creating the basic holder of your lasagna. Bring it up to the sides and really pat it down so it's solid. You're going to pop that into the oven at about 400 degrees, as I said, and you're going to let it cook for about 15 minutes. So we're going to go ahead and pop that in the oven right now. While that's cooking, we're going to go ahead and turn our burner on to a medium heat, and we're going to cook some mushrooms and some onions. Now, I use a mandolin because I like to have all of my ingredients the same size. Don't use your fingers, there's a little tool here, and there's a reason for it, because you will cut your fingers. This just makes for great, even vegetables, and when you're cooking with lasagna, you want all of your vegetables to be about the same. So you can see we've got this great shredded onions. Go ahead and put that into our pan. And you're going to saute those for a couple of minutes. Add some salt and pepper. And just let those um, wet out a little bit or caramelize some salt. And we're going to let those go ahead and turn that heat up a little bit and start to cook. I use porcini mushrooms in this recipe. You can use any mushrooms you like that you like. The difference in mushrooms are pretty simple. They're all the same. It's the age of the mushroom. So a porcini mushroom is kind of the middle child of mushrooms. You have white mushrooms, which are the little button mushrooms you see all the time. You have porcini mushrooms. And then you have um, the bigger, um, I just lost my mind where I was going, but the bigger mushrooms, you know what I'm talking about. So we're also going to go ahead and put these wow. into 
the pot with the onions. And we're going to saute those until they're nice and caramelized. Now, the other part of this lasagna is the noodles. What are we using for noodles? Since this is keto, we can't use any. So I've taken a cauliflower pizza, and you cut it into the size of the noodles that you're going to, that you normally use, like this. And this is from Stater Brothers. You can also get it from Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, any specialty store. And just cut it up into the same size. I'm gonna spray a little bit of olive oil on it. And while you've got the crust in there, you're also gonna add these and let those cook. They're both going to cook for about 15 minutes. Now, while that's cooking, you're also going to grate up some carrots. You're gonna roast some red peppers. And the way you roast red peppers is you can either put them in the oven or you can take a creme brulee torch, stick a fork in the pepper and just fire away until all the skin is black on the outside. Put it into a paper bag and let it sweat for a couple of minutes and then pull it out and you'll find all of the outside skin will just peel right off and you've got these beautiful red peppers that are left and you just open them up and we're going to use that as part of our layering. You're also going to cut up some mozzarella cheese in about quarter inch slices, some ricotta cheese, and also some tomato sauce. Now I make my own tomato sauce and I make a lot of it. So I'll make a big pot and then I'll freeze it because you can use it any other time you want. This is just a nice basil tomato sauce. There's no meat in it. I've also grilled some asparagus. Now I just do that either on my grill or right here on the stove with a grill, a grill plate and you get nice grilled asparagus from it. It's delicious, a little bit of salt and pepper. We're also gonna use some basil in this recipe. This is out of my garden, and when you're using your basil, cut it or break it off at the stem. You don't want the stems in your recipe because you're just gonna get a lot of sourness from that. So we're gonna have that. We're also gonna cut up some yellow squash. Again, I use my mandolin, and you just slice. And you get nice, even slices. Don't get too close to the blade because you're going to cut your fingers and have some band-aids by in case you need those. And that's what we're going to be layering into all of this. We're also going to be using some ricotta cheese, some carrots, and that's about it. So you'll need eight slices of mozzarella, a cup of shredded Parmesan, a cup of ricotta, a cup of shredded carrots, a squash sliced, a cup of mush mushroom sauteed, along with the onion sauteed, the roasted red pepper, the fresh basil, the tomato sauce, and the grilled asparagus. So the mushrooms are doing really well here with the onions. Just keep stirring them. And that's where we're going to be adding to one of our layers. Inside we've got the cauliflower crust going. You're going to want to turn the crust or the cauliflower about five minutes in because it's going to start to get crispy. So you can see the edges getting crispy right here. So you just want to turn them over and then put them back in the oven. You don't want them to be super crispy. You want them to be a little bit like a noodle is what you're trying to get, all right? And that's going to add some substance to the actual strength of the lasagna when we pull it out of the oven. So we've got all of our ingredients pulled together and you're going to <laughs> I've got my producer on the other side of the camera saying, look here. So this is our third show, so we're still kind of weaning into it, so bear with us. So once your recipe or your crust is done, you're going to pull that out of the oven. It doesn't have to be super crispy yet, because you're going to be cooking it longer also once you get it in. So you've got this nice crispy chicken crust, along with our cauliflower crust. And we're going to just start layering. Now you don't want to put sauce on the very bottom of the chicken because it's going to make it too moist and you're trying to get a crispy bottom on that. So we're going to start off with some of our basil and you're just going to layer your basil along the bottom. And I swear I had a bowl of basil somewhere. I'm not sure what happened to it. But you just throw it on there. There's no rhyme or reason to it. And you can layer however you'd like to layer. So whichever you'd like to have on there first, just go ahead and do it. All right, so we've got basil on the bottom. I'm going to take a little bit of sauce, 
just drizzle it along. And then I'm going to put some cheese on this. I don't know if you can see this, but we're going to put some cheese on it. The cheese gives it a nice creaminess in the middle. And like I said, just layer however you'd like to layer. There we go. I'm going to add some asparagus just in the middle here. And now this is where the noodles come in, or the crust. You're going to take the crust and however it fits, if you need to rip off a little edge from it, you're going to go ahead and just do that. And you're creating another layer, which will just add some substance into the pasta. The next thing we're going to add is some carrots. Some of the roasted peppers. And just take the whole piece and just lay it in there. It doesn't have to be perfect. There's nothing perfect about lasagna except the love that goes into it. We're going to then take a little bit more sauce. Add in some of our yellow squash. And again, layer this nicely because it's going to look much nicer when you cut it open. And serve it to your family. And then one of the last things we're going to add is some ricotta cheese. And you're just going to plop some of that right on top. Don't worry about precision with this. And the very last, or the very one of the last two things we're going to add into it is our onions and our mushrooms. So as you start to build this, the extra parchment you have, pull it over and push it down so that you get a little bit more consistency throughout it. And then we're going to add our mushrooms and our onions right on top. Oh my god, this smells so good. And then we're going to add the last few pieces of our cauliflower. And then on the very, very top, you're going to take the remainder of your cheese, because this is going to create a crust on the top for you. And push it down. And push it down. So there we have this beautiful lasagna. We're going to go ahead and put that into the oven. You're going to bake it at 400 degrees for about an hour. Now, of course, we don't have an hour to sit and wait for that to be done. Through, so through the miracle of television, we just happen to have a lovely lasagna sitting here for everybody to enjoy. Now, the other benefit of parchment paper, besides the fact you don't have to scrub your dish out, is that when you're ready to serve the lasagna, just pick it up. And there you have it. As you can see on the sides, you've got this nice crispy chicken crust. And when we cut it open, you've got this beautiful layered lasagna that's simply delicious. Your kids aren't even going to know there's vegetables in this, and they're going to love it. You know, cooking's a little bit crazy, a little bit loud, and a whole lot of love. So let's be grateful, get your family in the kitchen, and I'll see you next time at Neighbors Cooking. Have a great night.